The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hello, welcome back. We are live at EMC World 2014. I'm Jeff Frick, you're on theCUBE. As you know, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we get the smartest people in the room. We invite them on theCUBE, we ask them the questions that you'd like to ask them, and we invite you to join the conversation. Go to crowdchat.net slash EMC World. Send us your questions, we'll try to get them in. So, joined in this segment with my co-host. Steve Keniston, the storage alchemist. Great to be here, Jeff, thank you. Coming to you live from Las Vegas, here on theCUBE. It's been a great show. Um, as Jeff mentioned, you know, we're extracting the signal from the noise, getting the greatest guests. We find helping out our pre industry practitioners is the best way to go. Today on theCUBE, we have uh, Renardo Nadorsi. He's the director of IT for Cit uh, Citrus Health Networks. Renardo, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So what do you think of this uh, EMC world? Super cool. Super it's my second year and it gets better every time. Yeah? So uh, any, anything big come out and hit you so far at the show? It's only the second day, but something interesting? Uh, yeah, I like the the Project Liberty, which is EMC responds to some of the challenges regarding replication of our VNX array to the cloud. So I'm looking forward to a conference on Thursday for that. Very good. So let's get right down into it. For our for our guests who might not know uh, Citrus Health, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you guys are, and then maybe a little bit about your infrastructure after that. Uh, Citrus Health Network. I've been with the company for seven years now. Uh, they do behavioral health. That's our bread and butter. And uh, we do coordinated healthcare services for uh, the population in the South Florida area, mostly Dade County and Broward County. Very good, and about, so you have a, a pretty big data center? Give us a, an we idea. We have, um, I mean, the infrastructure is on my shoulders. We have three racks in Terramark, Terramark downtown Miami, which is one of the 10 biggest data centers on the, on the US. Um, the infrastructure is combined of a Cisco UCS product. We kind of follow the V-Block uh, architecture and design. And we have Cisco UCS on the computing. We have a, a VNX 5300 from EMC on the storage. And um, top of rack switches, uh, Avamars for backup and disaster recovery. We have invested on Source One for email archiving, PowerPath for native multipathing down to the array. Um, pretty much that's more or less the uh, um, VMware, of course, or hypervisor of choice, with uh, 300 concurrent users of VMware View for our VDI. Um, initiative. So running VDI, so you've heard a lot of uh, industry practitioners as of recent and folks who've come on theCUBE that talked a little bit about VDI. Maybe you can help take us through a little bit about uh, how you guys put, the, put VDI in place, maybe some of the challenges, maybe some advice to our practitioners about things they ought to be thinking about as they go to a VDI infrastructure? It was a, it was a lot of research before we decided to, to take the plunge. Uh, we don't regret a single bit. I'm able to have 300 concurrent users logging into the system, VNX and the a whole solution, including the fast VP and the, and the fast cache, makes up for a great uh, uh, solution for the bootstorm uh, challenges that we were having. But uh, it, it turns out to be great. I mean, we have the mobility of the people on the field. We got connections of iPad, uh, thin clients, laptops. Uh, as I was, I was earlier connected uh, remotely using VMware View to my office, just like if I was sitting on my desk. So, it's, it's excellent. Very good, so that's a drill down on kind of the end users. Tell us a little bit about the applications that you guys are serving up and kind of how those applications have transformed through IT as you've been at, at Citrus Home. We are 100% virtualized, so we have the Exchange 2013, so the world on my infrastructure, we have the SQL servers on the infrastructure, we have SharePoint on the infrastructure, and we have our behavioral uh, proprietary uh, uh, application full-blown enterprise uh, uh, deployment to it with UAT testing, with Sandbox, so we can go through the motions. Uh, everything basically runs on the infrastructure and I especially uh, monitor the whole concept with a storage resource management suite, which is another of the products that we uh, have invested on EMC. It, it pans out well. We have a completely vi vision of the whole computing, storage, and application uh, from, the, from the suite in order to maintain consistent and business continuity uh, high availability redundancy to, to be able to provide the, the, the infrastructure to service the population that, that we do. So talk a little bit about your guys' app, the behavioral app. I don't know quite understand what that means for, the, for me and for the audience when you say unlike, what your specialty. Uh, unlike primary care, which is episodical, you go to see the doctor and right. you have a headache, the doctor sends you some labs, right. and then after do a follow-up visit, behavioral health gets treated a little bit differently. So you are uh, under a certain uh, 
follow up, that it, it gets longer. So there's a very different set of metrics and parameters that get measured when you're doing behavioral health. You have treatment plans, you have um, follow up, you have case management, et cetera. What happens is um, there's very few proprietary softwares out there that do this kind of uh, metrics and, and, and uh, collecting data. And uh, there's a company called Netsmart Technologies, and they have a protocol uh, avatar. So we, we actually implemented that, and we able to follow up an electronic health record, which you, with all the reforms that are happening on the, on the, on the government for the Medicaid or Medicare, their electronic health record is one of the requirements that we have. That is the biggest drive that we have for the infrastructure. That translates into my uh, physical shards, which we do pay money for storing of those shards, and guys like Aaron Mountain to keep the storage of those boxes. We're gonna do a back file scanning of those shards into the electronic health record, and that drive, you know, uh, uh, backup and disaster recovery, availability, uh, store side, uh, where well, we're going to put all those documents, be able the doctor to provide those documents quickly to the doctor when he's sitting in front of a patient, etc. And are you tracking the behavior of the patient? Is that what this means? That is means? the ultimate goal. Eventually we want to have some sort of data analytics with all that data as it's being crunched. Right. We want to be able to analyze trends and, 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 and resources, you know, and the diabetes. We're trying to connect usually um, the behavioral health with the primary care. We, we don't okay. believe that the head is separated from the body just the same way you have a diagnosed schizophrenia, or you could also have diabetes, you can also have cholesterol. So by means of seeing as a holistic approach, we're able to see how those indicators of better treatment or better uh, follow-up from the uh, body side actually also affects the outcome of uh, behavioral treatment. Yeah, so I think healthcare is probably a pretty big, one, a pretty big industry, but two, one that's had a lot of change over the course Correct. of time. Correct. So, uh, I know maybe, and I think you just won on Jeopardy, right? So Indeed, yes. Uh, it makes me think back to, uh, so Watson winning on Jeopardy, and Watson now being touted by IBM as this technology that's really um, for, uh, th that they're really promoting for healthcare and tying into that. And I know, you know, a lot of uh, healthcare professionals tying into some large global healthcare network. Are, are you looking at being able to take some of the drivers and technology that you have and answers that you have and feed you know, other things so that there's more sharing, because you said you know, separating the head from the body, you, know, you want to get closer? I believe that's the, where the industry, again, again my, my own vision to it, eventually everybody will have some sort of electronic health record, because you have a health record when you go to come see us at our facility, but you also have a, a, an orthopedic, and you also have your, your, your dental, and as a woman you have your OBGYN. So everybody has some of these silos of information and I believe the insurance company, what they want and the government is to be able to have some sort of a, a via an interface, or some sort of sharing of the information. What if you come to see me, I can see on a single slide your whole, history. your whole history of why you've been treated. How can one thing could depend on something? How you usually fill out a form when you come in and we basically go based on your words or what things you have done in the past, but we have no clue if you have had a reaction or not to some sort of medication. That's a kind of holistic approach and it's also able for uh, the management of the funds and how they get um, well, then I think too, like applications, right? Like Fitbit, right? Is is super popular right now. He's got. To, so does that tie into your system? Indeed. You know, into Mondo. You know, there's a lot of. When you, that's what triggered me when you said behavior. You know, people are doing things all the time, and now not only a dedicated device like a Fitbit, but even your phone basically Correct. knows what Correct. you're doing Indeed. all the time. So that must introduce all kinds of interesting potential data challenges for you. Different sources, different types. Correct. Are, are you dealing with those now? Are you planning for those in the future? How does that we, kind of play? We right now are in the gathering. Uh, of the data. I, I believe as we see in events like this give uh, me the opportunity to come back to the to our organization and have some sort of strategy. This is what I think we should be heading to. The analytics of the data allows upper management to make decisions regarding where we're going as a company, how do we grow, how do we improve the service to the client, which is eventually the ultimate goal for us on the healthcare market. So how, is, how have you seen, the, uh, you know, with all the regulatory compliance that you talked about, and everybody moving to electronic healthcare these days, can you take us through over the last few years how you've seen data grow within your environment? That's going to be a big challenge. It is indeed. We actually went from a pure physical environment to this whole data center, whole, uh, of wholesome approach approach with uh, the solution of vendors was, uh, was a, a, a difficult one, but we were looking for somebody that integrates. EMC, Cisco, and VMware was spot on. The integration is very tight. It allows for an ease of management, um, and they usually have a, a very back end of uh, security and, and compliance and data governance. It's been said multiple times, you cannot manage what you cannot monitor. So part of the data governance that we're trying to move on to the next step is having some sort of data governance where we can see what's coming in, 
by means of monitoring not just the technical aspects of the infrastructure, but the technical aspects of the data. What data is it coming in? Are we checking for integrity on that data? What kind of analytics can we infer from that data as we run analysis and dashboards in terms of like cubes of information and we, whatever happened, if we shoot these parameters, how many diabetic patients do we have that are also uh, diagnosed with schizophrenia, and give us some sort of uh, um, uh, insights of where would be providing the best service and, uh, and eventually the patient will be the, the so, ultimate. So you've said it a couple of times and I, and I think I think you're, you're right on track. I think you're going to, you have all this information, this data, the next kind of step is this whole big data trend, right? Correct. You're starting to think about that and, and as you're starting to, uh, to think about that, you know, tell us some of the things that you think you're going to have to plan for as, as you start to I implement an analytics type of solution for that information. It's, a, it, it's I think it's very young Despite the fact there's a few companies that have done major headway on, on this aspect, we're not at the size of the Green Plum or, or the Pivotal uh, challenges, but um, right now the challenge is finding a vendor that can provide us great analytics based on the unstructured data that we have, so we're able to make more business decisions of where we're going as a company, you know, how we're growing and how to expand, or should we need to or not, the infrastructure back end of it. So talk a little bit about the benefits that you get as, as not a big company, a, a medium-sized company coming to a show like this in terms of interaction with, with other uh, guys like yourself, uh, new products that you're getting, seeing. You know, why should people come to an event like EMC World? It's, it's invaluable. I, I, I just was having a discussion with uh, one of the gurus of the, of the VNX and that basically, in a 10 minute window, I got some great inside information regarding what could be the rearranging of how I have my data. As the, I guess as time passes, they realize some of the best practice shift a little bit, and they see you know better metrics, how you better pool your resources. An event like this gives me and, and the company the possibility of better tweaking our environment so we can get the, the most juice out of, out of the investment that we have done. So, and that usually happens on this event, plus the trending that you're seeing, the big vendors that come out, what kind of products they're bringing to the market, what things are a better fit for us based on our size. You know, it's the best of the breeds on, the, on a single place. Good. So, give you a, a, a minute here. So, uh, Renato was just on the game show. I don't know if you could hear it on the prior segment. They were making all kinds of noise, and under the under the hot lights in the big city, he uh, he stumbled. So, is there any answers that you want to share with the guys back home that, that you missed that you knew the answer? I'll give you, a, you know. After a 60 second spotlight on you, <laughs> there's very little that you can do. <laughs> very the good. nervous system kicks in, and the behavioral just trumps you, <laughs> despite the fact that you know the answer. Yeah, that's what, that's funny. Well, thanks for coming on the queue. Thanks for really me. appreciate it. It's it. Again, like we said, uh, we like to talk to the folks from, from EMC, but we really like to talk to the practitioners, the guys that are out in the field. I was very impressed with really the level of definition in which you defined your sure. stack. So I'm going to give you the last word as we sign out here. What's, what's your next big challenge that you're looking to overcome? What's your next big uh, you know, six months out? Data analytics. Data analytics. Indeed. There you go, well that sums it up. So I'm Jeff Frick with Steve Keniston. We're at theCUBE, we're at EMC World 2014. We'll be back with our next segment after this short break. Thanks for watching.